to announce the USTA Tennis Classic of Macon. It's a USTA Pro Circuit event, $25,000 event on the USTA Pro Circuit. It's the largest uh, circuit of tennis events in the world, the USTA Pro Circuit. Just about every professional that's ranked, all the players you see at Wimbledon have played in USTA Pro Circuit events, and this is going to be a women's event. So um, Eric has run this event in Troy for the last 10 years, and uh, Eric, of course, is the new men's and women's tennis coach at Mercer, and he'd like to talk about some of the points regarding the tournament, and uh, we can take questions, and then he'll be available. Anyone can talk after the press conference as well. So, Thanks, Rick. Uh, one thing, there's a few people to thank, but one thing that's real important, you know, this, is good, this is the only professional women's event in the state of Georgia, not only the biggest, but the only event, which I just found out, and I, you know, that's a great thing. I want to thank Stratford Academy for letting us host the event. Uh, I met Jamie Kaplan when I first came on in, to town, and she's been a tremendous help, and we'll be working side by side to get the event ready and to host it here. And I want to thank Headmaster Dr. Bob Vito and Athletic Director Grady Smith at Stratford. They've been very helpful letting us bring the event here. We're also, it's, it's a week-long event. We're not just going to be using Stratford. I want to thank Patty out at uh, Wesleyan College. We're going to be using Wesleyan as the practice court site and transporting players back and forth. Uh, we'll be doing clinics out there. We're also going to be going to Mercer. And I want to thank Sybil and Jim for letting uh, let me do the event. My main job is, of course, uh, running the program at Mercer. But we'll be doing plenty of clinics children's clinics, things like that, and events and functions at Mercer as well. One thing about this event, I mean, it's going to bring the top players from all over the world to Macon that week in October. Just last week at Wimbledon, Debrito, the, the girl that beat Sharapova in, I think, the second or third round, she lost first round at our tournament last week in Troy, uh, last year in Troy, Alabama. So it's, it's an incredible uh, level of tennis. As far as for the community, it's a very good economic impact. We'll have over 150 to 200 people here for the week, staying in the hotels, eating in restaurants, buying gas. So economically, I feel it's a win-win for everybody. We'll be doing a lot of community service events, going to the local schools and doing clinics, having clinics here where not just we'll be involved, but the players will be involved hand-on-hand -hand with the kids doing things. We're looking to work with the Macon Tennis Association. This is volunteer driven. Uh, in Troy, we did it with a staff of four or five people. You know, here we're hoping to have a great staff of volunteers that can help us do the event. We're hoping to do it also, and I talked to Jamie, uh, run it as a nonprofit organization, and we're hoping to uh, realign with an organization and uh, help out in that way. Um, and last thing, just as far as this event, not only do the top players come in, the last four years at Troy, we've had the top two junior players in the world have come to the event. And I'm not saying we can sign players like that at Mercer, but it's a tremendous recruiting advantage for us at Mercer and just for the university and town in general. So we're excited about it. Uh, again, Jamie has a big thing, a big deal to do with this, and I'd like her to say a few words because she, of course, played pro tennis and is very familiar with this event. Well, we are very excited to have this event at Stratford, and these sort of events is how I got my start. So I played in these uh, satellite tournaments for about a year and a half, and then I was at Wimbledon, just like uh, Eric was saying. So for me, it's uh, I enjoyed playing those events and, and was so fortunate to have been a part of them, and I'm excited to be on the other side of it and help these players along because people who are here this year Next year, we'll be watching some of them on television, uh, playing at Wimbledon, the U.S. Open. So it, it's exciting. You, uh, the community will be involved and, and befriend some of these players, and, and they're people that I still talk to this day that I, that I became friends with when I played on the satellite tour, and that was back in 1983-84. So uh, we're really excited to have professional tennis back. Uh, Randy Stevens is here with us today, and. He was the director of a, the last time we had a men's satellite tournament here at John Drew Smith Tennis Center, and that was back in the 90s. And so uh, that, was a, that was a big time back then when Randy brought professional tennis to Macon, and, and we're just happy to have it back. Thanks for coming, Randy. For, for those of you that are maybe familiar with baseball, the kind of equivalent would be this would be AAA baseball. 
um, as far as to the ATP and the WTA professional tennis tours and kind of how the week will unfold. There'll be a 64-person qualifying tournament the first two days of the tournament, and then the qualifiers out of that will join uh, the 24 people in the main draw, which will start on Tuesday, and then that will play out through the finals on, on Sunday. And there will be also uh, uh, the players will be announced probably the middle of September, and then there will also be three wild cards named as well, and that could be uh, anyone that normally wouldn't qualify for the tournament. There are spots for them in the tournament as well. The USTA has one, and then Eric has uh, wild card opportunities as well. So, uh, um, like he said, uh, a pro am kids. The kids clinics are always a hit in Troy, and the kids love it. And actually, actually, the players love it probably more than the kids getting out on the court with, with the kids and and interacting and engaging with them. So it's a, it's really a good event for uh, for promoting junior tennis and tennis as a whole. Does Eric have any parting words? Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it's not crazy, but if you go back and look, like when some of the top players get injured, Andre Agassi when he was injured. He went back and played challengers. They use <laughs> these events as ways to get matches in. And one more thing about the date of our event, it's in October, and the, the cutoff for the Australian Open is a few weeks after our event. So a lot of players, we've always had a good field in Troy because they're trying to get points before the Australian Open cutoff because that's a long trip and they want to make sure they get into the Australian. So we've always had a good field show up and you never know. I mean, if Serena gets injured at the US Open is out, and needs some matches, we'll definitely uh, get her here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let her in as a wild card. Yeah, without a doubt. You use your other wild card, get bring Jamie back. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. That'd be great. But I uh, appreciate everyone coming out. We'll start on October 6th, the Sunday we're qualifying. That'll run two days. Uh, that's a 64 draw. And then eight of those players will go into the main draw starting on Tuesday the 8th. And that's a 32 draw and it will go down until the following Sunday, I believe the 13th, and we'll have the finals that day. Not only is it great for my team to see this level of play, but it's great for the current players on my team to see how they prepare, how they practice. Also, from a recruiting standpoint, none of these players will be going to college because they're professionals, but they, it's all word of mouth. Their coaches will speak to players. They're from countries all over the world. Uh, it's helped me at Troy recruiting very much with our women's program, who's you know, been top 60, top 50 in the country the last couple years. So it's, it's a very good recruiting advantage. We'll average for that week anywhere from 150 to 225 people. That's players, coaches, trainers, parents. And they'll be here averaging four to seven nights in a hotel, restaurants, buying gas. So, you know, we estimated in Troy uh, anywhere from three to $500,000 was spent that week. And I feel here will be even more. So it's a great economic impact.